We're back. This is uh, Jack City, and you know, welcome back to the uh, Football Manager channel. I'm I'm in a little bit of a funk, if I'm honest. I don't know what to uh, record here, so I'm gonna just spin the wheel and just see what happens, see what we land on, because I just picked 20 teams, and I, I don't I don't know what to record for you guys. So uh, I thought let's just you know just blindly pick something and then just see what happens. And uh, you know, I'm kind of waiting for FM 2025 to come out because it's going to be in a couple months here so uh we'll see what's going on i know that some of the other bigger streamers in this uh this area are, are all getting on a big old live stream you know doing all that stuff so uh anyways let's you know let's go on i got uh 20 teams here on a nice colorful wheel the most authoritative uh news or not news site but site and all things that are spinning in colorful wheel of names um and this is going to be just like Whoever is the last of it will be, I'll pick and I'll play, uh, you know, just see what's going on. I'm going to play it as realistically as possible. That's how I like to play it out. So we got some notable teams, people you may have known or seen before. Zurich, Braunschweig down here, um, Dunkirk, the uh, the French team of the second division, um, Albafete, 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 I don't know, uh, in Spain, uh, Oh, uh, Flamengo. That's Flamengo, uh, the country of Azerbaijan. So maybe some international football. There's a bunch of other uh, smaller teams. Having in Waterlooville, if you're lower leagues in England, you probably can pick up that. But um, yeah, I mean, we kind of got teams from all over the place. But let's uh, let's spin it out and uh, let's see who we run into. Uh, you know, this is just the the pick and blind, really. Uh, having Waterloo, Waterlooville is out. So there we go. We're just gonna we're just gonna see who we lit. Oh, oh, Braunschweig. All right, they're one of the bigger teams on the uh, on here right now. So they're out. Is it Osserums? Yeah, I don't even. I they're definitely. Uh, Scandinavian. I don't. I don't quite know who Asarums is, but uh, oh, this is an Italian team in the third division, if I remember correctly, San Donato. So they're gone. But yeah, you know, I just wanted to just uh, you know screw around, just kind of play it out, see what's going on. Samson Spor from Turkey, you're gone, um, and just just see where the uh, the save takes me. You know, in the meantime, you know, just record for you guys. See, like, see how we go. See what kind of storylines are bringing around, like taking on Nockbreda. I, I don't, I can't remember, but I think they're in Scotland. Um, but yeah, and you know, just like just have fun with it. You know, just play a little casually, see what's going on. Skeleftea, I think they're uh, they're Swedish. I love that they're cheering me on here, as everything gets knocked out. Yarun, Harun, I don't know. Yarun, I think they're uh, Croatian. I picked them at random, and you know, I took a look at them of who they are like previously, but I don't remember everybody. Ranheim Football from Norway, I think they're in the second division of Norway, so they're gone. That's unfortunate. I like playing in the uh, the Scandinavian leagues, like Norway. They're great. They're really fun. Uh, Flamengo, probably the biggest team. They are also gone now. Rudesh. I don't know where these guys are. So, uh, you know, if I don't know, then I can't miss you. Petrica. I think this is a uh, Slovenian. Uh oh, oh, that was close. Yeah, so uh, I think they're Slovenian, Petrica. Um, Dunkirk. Yep, Dunkirk is out. Okay. That's all right. That's all right. The French. Merida. All right, in Spain. I don't know which uh, tier they're out of. But uh, I know they're probably like the third tier, maybe fourth tier. But Albacete, they're also going to be out. That's too bad. I think they're um, <clears throat> in the the second league of Spain. International management will be off the table as well. Azerbaijan, they're out. Oh, 
rap or rape. Nope, definitely not that word. It's probably rap. <laughs> it's probably, rapper? I don't know. Uh, Tuckums. I see. What's a that's a great name, Tuckums. Tuckums. I don't know, but they're gone now. PDRM and Zurich. Oh, PDRM. There we go. All right, so we're going to be playing with PDRM, uh, and I will take you right to them. We'll see where these guys are and give you a little introduction. And PDRM, you may have known this already, but it's possible. But we're playing as the Caps. Police de Raja Malaysia FC, the Caps. Yep, we're playing as the police force. I did not know that we are going to be the police until right now but uh i've just been poking around uh prior to uh recording here and it's very interesting our rivals obviously are the armed forces they play at the ministry of defense uh as their home stadium so that's very nice our uh, history here is um two malaysian premier league trophies that's the second tier that we're currently in right now so back in 2006 7 and then also back in 2014 so, um, yeah, two titles at this current juncture right now. Uh, interestingly enough as well, uh, we got three teams going to get relegated at the end of the year, no matter what. So I don't think anybody's going down, uh, which is kind of nice. So I don't have to worry about that. Uh, just cause, uh, I think they're reordering or they're getting rid of the second t division teams or second tier teams. I'm not sure. I really I actually don't know anything about Malaysian soccer, so I don't know why I'm even giving my opinion here. So uh, there's that. But uh, Perak obviously has a uh, negative nine point deduction for financial mismanagement. So they get to start off at the bottom. So whatever. Sucks for you guys. Um, yeah. But uh, going on, I also wanted to just like, again, I wanted to play this like realistically, I want to, I want to really delve into this save and really get my feet wet. And I don't know much about what's going on around me. So, um, yeah, so let's, you know, looking at my team here, you know, we've got some, uh, we got an absolute stud, an absolute stud of a, uh, um, a center back here, James Okwuosa. 31 years old, two caps for Nigeria, which is crazy. Um, prime years, he's making a fat wage. He's 31 years old, prime years of his life. Uh, he is going to be the heart of our defense and literally is going to be, we're going to be so dependent on him. Um, also, going forward, we got uh, Fadi Mahmoud uh, Awad. And he's a star player from Jordan. We got him on loan from uh, Al Wadat in Jordan. So uh, he's 20 years old and also has three caps for the Jordanians, uh, which is very exciting. So we got a defensive midfielder and a center back who are uh, internationals, which is great. Uh, then we got Kya Min Woo, uh, who's a French player who is from Myanmar. He's got two caps for the uh, national team as well, which is super cool. Uh, but he, you know, I, we'll see. How, he looks much better than everybody else, as you can see, but we'll see how he plays. Marcus McCauley. He is from Liberia. Uh, is he from my Liberia or? Yeah, he is. Look at that. Then he came out, played for jo in Jordan for a while, and uh, brief stint in Saudi Arabia. And then he's here. So uh, we got Marcus McCauley from Liberia, uh, and he's you know attacking midfielder, striker, player, also a star player for us. And we also got Uche Agba, a Nigerian, 35 years old, uh, no caps for Nigeria unfortunately, but uh, yeah, from Nigeria, Heartland FC. So made his way through the Middle East and he found his way to us. Uh, very, very exciting. And then we got uh, Jacques Fay. I, by the way, I just love all the foreign players. Like, they're so great. These, uh, what? Ultimate? Okay, sure. Um, Jacques Fay, Senegalese. And then Bruno Castaneda, uh, the Japanese Brazilian. Very, very cool. He's he's born and raised in Brazil, but uh, as you can see, Bruno, Janichi, Suzuki, Castaneda. And he's uh, came out of Japan, actually. It's very, very cool. 
Um, notable Malaysian players. I want to just give a little bit of love to the home nation because I don't want to be just isolating only the foreigners here. But, uh, man, there's not a lot of talent here. Uh, we got this guy on loan. He's 35 years old. Uh, Mohammed Azmi Muslim. Uh, oh, 19 caps for the Malaysian national team, 35 years old, on loan from Penang. They're, they're in the league above. So, eh, you know, he's a decent player, definitely useful. Uh, also, Mohamed Arif uh, Mohamed Anwar, 26 years old. Uh, he's been here about, you know, not a stellar career so far, but, you know, that's fine. We do have a ton of people in our under 21s. This is all the money that's just getting drained out of the club right here. You can see it. Uh, way too much going on. On top of a full U21 staff and a full U19 squad with full staff. So, um, yeah, a little bit too much. A little bit too much, if, I, if I'm honest. It's a little overkill. So I'm not pumped about that. Um, first team candidates. All right. All right. Honestly, he's not like, he's not the worst. We only have a certain amount of foreigner slots that we could, we're able to use. There's a maximum of uh, a certain amount of slots who are non-Asian. There's a maximum of slots for, uh, who are Asian, uh, for foreigners. So I think it's a uh, one, two, three, and then it's one, two, three, four. Four. So I think we actually hit the maximum already. Uh, it's four foreigners who are non-Asian. And we got a Senegalese, uh, two Nigerians, and a Liberian. And then, yeah, and then Jordanian, uh, Myanmar. But what, what do you call someone from Myanmar? Myanmarese. Myanmarese? Okay. Uh, and then Japanese. Um, so, yeah. So there we go. Um, yeah. But looking at this, so we get the police... Uh, I haven't even started any friendlies or anything like it, like that yet. Competitions, just the league, and then also the Malaysian FA Cup. So we'll uh, show you that there. I do want to highlight too is that how I'm going to play the save is again. I wanted to bring it to like realism. I wanted to really uh, make sure that it was true to life, uh, so we can really enjoy this for what it is. So that being said. Um, Looking through here, you can see work within the payroll budget. It's absolutely required, and they grow the club's reputation is desired. Uh, they want me to be mid-table, which shouldn't be too hard considering there's a nine-point deduction on one team, and there's also three teams getting relegated. So, uh, I mean, depending on how the teams get relegated, I mean, I guess, I, I don't know how good they are, but whatever. These guys, mid-table for the supporters, that's fine. There's no style of play that I have to bring. Uh so go okay so the board members right basically like they only want to sign players who are under 23 that's fine but we got a president and three directors so i just decided that um you know going into this that we got a president who's going to be handling most of like the big decisions right and this guy's been here since 2020 he's the uh you know let's say second oldest in terms of the senior board members right so he's going to have like a, a pretty significant role and then also i kind of just decided that these guys are going to get like the uh the lesser tasks because they're relatively new at here uh at the club and also they they're still a director so they still get a minority role um within the club so they they're going to be making some decisions here so going to the staff and some of the responsibilities here obviously they have that's usually filled up but uh some of the staff responsibilities um, you can see here, like recruit directors, right? The president is going to be responsible for that, as well as the staff recruitment for the first team. Uh, anything that's like really related to scouting, whatnot, it's going to be the general manager. Um, the medical staff, this is going to be one of the minority directors, Abdul Rahim. And then uh, I get to do the coaching staff and also head of youth development because it's also part of the, the coaching staff. If you go here, head of youth development is actually part of the coaching staff. So, um, wanted to make sure that I retain my uh, aspect here. Uh, going into the, the, the recruitment, recruiting of staff for the U19s, Abdul Razak is one of the 2022 uh, directors. He gets to like own the U21s. And then Ahmad Mahmoud gets the U19s. General manager gets to dictate whoever gets coaching courses. He has like the approval on it because it's really just me and him. So 
whatever. Um, yeah. So there's that. Then there's the contracts aspect. Um, G- the GM and technical directors, the president gets that. President gets anybody who is in the first team. And then Abdul Razak is the U21s. Uh, Mahmoud gets the U19s. And then going to scouting, the GM basically handles all that. Transfers, the GM is going to find people and then negotiate the transfer deal. And then the president is actually going to finalize the deal, right? And that's going to be for incoming and outgoing transfers for the first team. GM gets free, like for any development loans, the GM just gets to take it. Uh, And then the GM also gets to negotiate any transfers that in or out for U21s and the U19s, but the finalizing person is the director abdul razak for u21s and then mahmoud for u19s oh and also for the contracts any uh yeah you get uh, the president for the senior contracts this is for players right abdul razak for u21 uh people and then u19s is uh mahmoud i also forgot to say too is that there's a uh abdul rahim he's like the other guy who doesn't uh run the u21s that He's like the other you like 2022 uh, board member, right? This guy, Abdul Rahim. I just decided that he's going to, uh, I'm like, man, he's got to do something, right? So he's he's going to just run the medical staff. That's basically his role. Uh, training, I get basically get all the same thing. You know, you split it between the head coaches. Uh, media, oh, I, I did also want to do this. Because the, the general manager has a media-friendly uh, handling style. He, I thought that it would probably make sense for him to take on all of the new signing press conferences. Uh, also, I'm letting the cup press conferences and the broadcast interviews, like the tunnel interviews, go to the assistant coach for the same reason. Uh, they're both they're he's media friendly as well. Anwar Udin. The other thing too is that obviously uh, my character's from the United States and does not speak the native language. I only speak English in this. So therefore, I just don't think that it would be appropriate for me to be doing all these interviews because I don't necessarily speak the language uh, uh, in Malaysia. So therefore, like it would be, it would make sense if I'm like shyer and I wouldn't necessarily attend press conferences as much. Uh, but things like at the Continental Cup, obviously league is like bread and butter. So you know, I, I still can't get away from like my head coach responsibilities, but I just felt as though some of the more uh, menial like press conferences, like there's no reason for me to be a part of it because, um, yeah, I just you know I'm I don't know the language and we have uh, media friendly uh, personalities here, anyways. Training, I already went over that. Tactics, yeah, I mean I'm doing it. Match, yeah, I'm doing everything. I. I'm still going back and forth about the friendly matches, whether I want to do them or not. Uh, we'll see, but I might not want to because honestly, honestly, I don't think I, I don't think I do. I don't think I want to do them, but yeah. So that is, uh, that's, I think that's it. I think that's what we're going to do. Um, I do want to just jump quickly. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to bust through these, uh, the friendlies. I'll take you right to uh project or Projek, FOM, MSN. I don't know who these guys are. Who are they? Yeah. I mean, they're going to get relegated, so... I, do they even have a team? They do. Oh, it's all like 18, 19-year-olds. Whoa. Okay. Interesting. I don't know what happened, but... Interesting. Okay. Well... I'll take you to that for the first uh, first game because uh, against these guys and that will be for the, the first episode. And um, I think if I remember correctly, and I, I honestly cannot remember, but uh, I think I turned off the transfers for at least for the first window. And I do that just because I play with the update anyways. So transfers have already been made like, like as in the second, like middle window. So therefore... Um, I think it's only fair for all the teams in my league to just kind of duke it out with who they have for now and then make those adjustments halfway through the season or wherever, wherever they happen. But uh, it's a pretty small, pretty short, uh, pretty short season, if I do say so myself. But yeah, so we'll see. Um, 
but yeah, this is it. Uh, you know, here's a squad. It's quite small. Um, and we don't really have, there's not really like much else. You know, oh, finances. Uh, yeah, 116,000 in the bank. Obviously we're spending 1.4 million in wages, uh, because you saw what the youth academy looks like. It's absolutely insane. But again, it's not my problem because I don't control any of that stuff because it's technically it is not the head coach's role to be running literally the entire club. I know that that's how some people like to play it, but I like to play it with realism. Like if there are people who are installed to take over those positions, how dare I take over their tasks and assume all responsibility for all tasks? It doesn't really make sense even in real life. So therefore the general manager, uh, he's alone on an island right now uh, in the entire recruiting department. Um, uh, Navron, you got it. So he's in charge of hiring these people too. So if he decides to do it alone, he, it he's on his own. So anyways, that is my uh, introduction for you. We're going to jump right into this, into the, uh, the first game here. <laughs> 